Hello and welcome to the channel. Today we've got a new HDA for you. This is called the Mask Maker, and this will be used to do such things as bounding box ramps, contact masks, and distance masks with self occlusion. So before I get into this, I'll show you this little render that I made for this scene. So this mask is used to paint the grooves where the snow and the tires go through. So I'll be doing a little breakdown of this HDA and how you can use it. And then also go through the scene of how I made this render and how I set it up. So right, let's dive into this then. Right, so we're in Houdini here. I'm gonna run you through some of the node settings and how to use them. So this is the mask maker. And the first option here will be a bounding box ramp. And this is kind of a standard zero to one bounding box in the X axis, you can choose in the Y axis, and you can choose in the Z axis. This is similar to some of the other mask nodes that have come on the channel. So there'll be a model import and then also a reference import. So what you can do is this being our second input, we can use this to apply the mask to. So let me just open the post processing, crush this down. So it's just the top mask down like this. What we can do is if we move forwards in the animation to something like this, where he's got his hammer in the air, move right here, you can see how it's using the second input still to apply the mask to here. So rather than the hammer now recalculating the bounding box on the top, we've got it stuck to relative to this model, which is quite useful for when you have animation. You can also do a reference frame. So if you wanted to do, for instance, the start frame, you could do this and untick second, very similar approach. And then there's the export, which it will be writing it to this kind of attribute, which is bounding box and then a visualize as well. So the second one is a distance. And this will basically calculate so from the third input, the distance to it. So if I go to the start here, you can see, and we'll turn on this. This will be the distance from the ground plane to the character. And what we can do is, which is quite useful, is if we hit self occlude, this will now trace rays from the model to the ground. And if it intersects itself, then it will go black. So you could almost do this like a sunlight pass. So if I chuck down a sphere, open this up, what I can do is if I put this to the input here, you can see we now have almost like a sunlight pass where we can transform this and it will recalculate. And anything that's underneath will become black. This is useful for scattering kind of some plants that may only grow in sunlight or for doing some look dev to do weathering for sunlight and stuff like that. So it's always very useful to have kind of a self occluded. Otherwise it would just be a direction, which means that it would just be a constant across it. So you can also untick this as well. And it will be the same with applying self and input and reference frame, similar to the first object. So if I input the third, let's look at the last one. And the last one here is a contact. So this will basically be the footprints of the character at a specific frame. And you'll have a distance threshold. But the cool thing about it is you can also cache. So if I click here, I've already cached it for the first 50 frames but you can cache the animation walking, which I will show in this next example of my scene where the car is driving. I use the full cache in certain areas, but this is quite useful for, you know, any kind of like sequence that you maybe want to get a, a region where the character walks across the whole ground. So maybe you can then remesh the ground higher res just for where his feet are and stuff like this. So it's quite useful. So let me show you my render scene and I'll go through that a little bit because it's there's some complex stuff to it that hopefully will help you guys out with some of your scenes. So if I jump up. So as a little breakdown, I can start off. We've got, we've got a truck model that I've made quite a while ago that I've used for the rig. We've then, what we've done is we've then put this through a sim. So this, if I go here, Let 
There we go. So I put this through a simulation and I built some constraints for spring and slider. And then there's a couple of motors that drive the wheels as well. So there'll be rotation and forward driving. It's a fairly simple rig at the moment. I'm looking to make this a little bit more complicated and release it as a HDA so that we can swap out vehicles for yourself and how you want to do it. So it's just driving along with this. This is then pulled out of the dot network and we're basically attaching the high res model to it here. This is then out for rendering. And there's also some lights here, which are for the light rig. There's a body position here, which is a single point. And this is used for creating the camera in chop. So I can show you that now as well. So now we have this simulation of the car. What's happening is, as you can see, the camera is following it. So in chops, we're reading in the position of the camera. We're recording, uh, sorry, position of the car. We're recording it. We're adding a lag and then we're outputting translation. So now this camera itself will follow the car moving around the terrain. If I turn the terrain on. Um, we'll follow the car moving around the terrain, but with a slight lag in the rotation, which is quite a nice way to dynamically make a camera that kind of follows your asset or constraint or whatever. So simulation volume. So there's a terrain as well. So at the moment, if I go here, what I can do is I can show you how I built and used some of the masks. So we have this kind of basic terrain that I've made with a noise. So we're using the mask maker here to create a bounding box ramp, give a bit of shading breakup on some of these rocks. And we're also here using the distance. So if I can take this, I'm using the distance mask to create this kind of like sunlight, as I was saying, like a sunlight path mask, which is where I'm going to spawn some of the vegetation. So it's only in the sunlight. And this is just using a sphere that's kind of like fairly far away to create this, which is quite nice. And then there's just another, this is the mesh map, which is a previous video, but you can go and download that one as well. And I'm using that just for normals to get the rocks the facing area here so we can use that for shading and then if i go down here i'm using this ray mask which is on a previous video which you can download which is to calculate a mask area for the camera because i don't want to be scattering and spawning assets around it and then there's also the mask maker here which is used to cash out the whole sequence of the tires touching so now i have this this mask and i'm combining these to basically spawn where I want to spawn the grass because I, I want it to be in the camera, but I don't want it to be intersecting with the tires or the ground geometry because we'll be deforming it based on the tires. So that would be just getting in the way. So apart from that, there's the Atlas one, which is on a previous video, you can grab it. I'm just cutting out some grass here for variation from an Atlas map um, and then a small rock. And I think the last thing as well is I've got a bit of volume as well. So I've got, I've got some, some cloudy volume that I'm using. And I'm using a density fall off from the actual car as well. So it just clears a little patch around the car and it's not completely foggy. So you can see this through here like that. Um, and then what I will do is I'll dive into LOPS and I'll have to show you around. So I've got a camera transform here that I'm pulling in the camera. I'm pulling in the transform data from COPS as well, so it will be moving around so the camera looks the same. Loading in the truck itself, we've got a grass scatter. And this is on the rocky areas and using that light path, so it's only on one side. I then have a rock scatter, which is kind of around the base of it. Uh, applying some materials, look dev lights, so there's a directional and a dome. Once it, once it loads in the, the shaders, I can show you. And then there's also a light rig here, which I'm applying to the vehicle. So this is um, using the points that I copied from the sim, and there's one for the front and rear lights, and these are copied to the car, as you can see here. So these light rigs are using instance, and they're referenced. And then there's a couple of render outputs for volume and separating it out for the thumbnails and stuff like that. So anyway, hope this video was useful.
download the, uh, the, the, the HDA in the description and have a play around. Let me know if there's any issues at all. Um, I'll hopefully be adding a couple more features in the later on because I want to add different types of masks, maybe stuff like rust or occlusion or drips or moss on the underside and stuff like that. So I'll let you know if I update this at all. But, um, yeah, hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next video.